So, hey, everybody, guess we got a big surprise, our surprise. You just finished experiencing one of my favorite movies, Free of Eden, and with us, via Skype, we have the film's the movie star, Sydney Poitier. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for the nice welcome. Hey. Yeah, so I, I appreciate, you know, I should have looked this up. I forgot your character's name. I don't know if you, you remember, but... Um, oh, on Free of Eden, you mean? On Free of Eden, yeah. Nicole. Nicole. So I believe you were fantastic. It's been a while. It's, you, yeah, it has been. But you, yeah. you know what is uh, 1998? I guess uh, so. Yeah, we're going back a little ways. I'm not going to do any math on that. But you look yeah. great. Yeah, oh, thank and, you. And um, you know, one of my favorite movies. It's like I told you, Mr. Clemens. I want to know things. What you think about giving me some lessons? Like I told you, Nicole, I don't teach anymore. Yeah, but Mr. Clemens, I'm stuck. And being stuck just ain't no good. No. Being stuck just ain't no good. Where do you live, Nicole? Brooklyn. In the Eden Garden housing complex. Been here long? All my life. My grandma lived there until she got enough money to move, because she and my mom, they don't get along. They don't talk no more. What about your father? No, nah, just me and my mom's live there now. You know about Eden? Yeah, I know about Eden. I saw this movie. It's a shame more people haven't, quite frankly, but yeah. I saw it at the Urban World Film Festival, and uh, it was kind of cool because, like, you you know, this, you had two movies that year. You also had Park Day at right, the festival yeah. that year. So yeah. I was like, wow, who's that girl? And then oh. it, it just turned out... <laughs> That, uh, you know, you, you come from famous lineage and all this other stuff. But this uh, amazing work in both films, which came first, by the way. Thank you. Um, Park Day came first by a matter of weeks. I did Park Day and then I flew straight from Missouri, where I shot Park Day, to Toronto, where I shot Free Eden. So within a week, probably. Wow. Okay. And Park yeah. Day has Hill Harper. It's, a, it's another underappreciated. Uh, it's a really great film yeah a lot going on but i mean so we're going back to free free of eden what are your memories of the film um well uh, it was one of, it was my first big thing that i did i had done smaller independent films like um park day and a couple other little small things um so and of course i was working with my dad which is probably the most prominent memory of it all um but it was really special to me because it was a uh working with him was simultaneously very intimidating and also super duper exciting because it wasn't something I thought I was going to get to do so quickly. I thought, you know, maybe someday down the line we'll do something together. But, um, it happened off the bat, which was actually really good for me because, um, it's also really scary going into a big production like that. Um, you know, there were bigger crews than I had ever seen and, and, um, it was a just a bigger deal, and it was nice to sort of have my dad there to guide me if I needed it, and to have you know he answered all my questions, and um, I felt safer than I might have you know otherwise. So I guess the thing I I took away mostly from it was having had that great working experience with him because I didn't get to do it again after that, you know. Mm. Um, so I'll always cherish that for that reason. Mm -hmm. And I also loved working in Toronto. I'm back, I'm back in that area now. We're a couple hours north of Toronto it's for the first time since Free of Eden, actually, which is really funny. Um, and I really enjoyed that city, too. It was a great city to work in. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I mean, since you brought up, what, let people know what you're, why you're in Toronto right now and where things are. <sighs> Oh, I am. Um, I'm actually in northern Ontario in a place called North Bay, which is a few hours north of Toronto. And I'm working on a television series called Carter. And it's uh, a Sony series. And it, it's right now it's a Canadian series. It's an international series. It'll be in Canada and a couple other countries. I'm not sure where it will be in America. Um, whether it's going to be on a streaming service, I don't know. I think they're still kind of working out those details. But it's just a really fun, kind of lighthearted uh, cop show that that airs more on the comedic side. It's almost like a comedy with procedural elements, I guess you would call it. Okay. Um, and it's you get to be a cop. I get to be a cop. Yeah, I'm I'm partners with. Well, Jerry O'Connell plays Carter, and he is an actor who had played a cop on TV for many years, and he's super famous, and he has sort of like a midlife crisis, and um, he ends up going home to this small town in Canada where he's from, 
and he keeps trying to insert himself into the police department because he thinks he knows everything about everything. <laughs> but he turns out to be right a lot of the time. And the girl that he grew up with who was his best friend growing up. And also there's a lot of kind of, you know, will they, won't they love tension there. Um, he, she's the, the lead detective at the police department. And so he keeps kind of trying to uh, get his, himself so, so in two, there on her cases. things he's trying to infiltrate. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And somehow he manages to become the mayor kind of gives him a uh, consulting detective position. And so he they end up kind of being unofficial partners and they kind of go on all these little capers together. It's really it's a sweet show. It, yeah. sounds, it sounds like fun. And I guess what the first the first TV was Abby was that? There's my first series, series was actually a series I did for NBC called First Years. It didn't stay on the air for very long at all. I think they only aired like three of the episodes. I think we shot about 15 of them and they aired three, sadly. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> TV can be brutal like that. Monday at 9, 8 central, NBC introduces five first year lawyers. The Protector. She is only fighting for what she believes is best for her daughter. The Fighter. I'm not talking to you. You will when we subpoena you. The Dreamer. What is this? How about that? They'll discover that sometimes the best years are the first years. Premieres NBC Monday at 9, 8 central. But that was my first series. And then after that, I think I did Joan of Arcadia and then I did Abby, I believe. Was okay. the, with Kadeem. I think. Yeah, with Kadeem Hardison, yeah. UPN Tuesday. How far will we go to get you to watch our hot new comedy, Abby? I was naked in that picture. Oh, <laughs> yes, you were. You can't keep something like that under wraps. But I never agreed to hang on Will's wall of booty. And yes, you'll get to see it too. <laughs> get a load of you. <laughs> that was great fun. We had a good time on that show. Well, well I, I know your time is limited, so we'll have to make a whole Sydney Portier, Sydney Tamia Portier special. <laughs> okay. But um, but but back to Free of Eden. So other memories, like I love this movie. I mean, for, well, just it makes I cry every single time. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm a sucker for for that whole, you know, sort of uh, My Fair Lady finding force. Or any anytime somebody's like tossing Quinnacatway was my favorite movie last year. Because yeah. Of some reason, so so very important. I mean, how did how did this movie come about? Did you have to audition? Okay, so this is how the movie came about. My, it was actually something that my dad had been working on with a partner of his, a producing partner um, by the name of Cedric. What was his last name? I'm blanking on it right now, but um, you could look it up on IMDb. I always knew him as Cedric and I, uh, Cedric Scott. Sorry. Okay, that's it, Cedric Scott. And um, and he, this is how I, this is this is the story as I know it. He approached me about. Nicole in the movie had two friends, two sort of sidekick friends. And he asked me would I want to audition for one of the friends. And I was like, yeah, I get, you know, sure, whatever. So I had, I had a, a very small reel at the time of some of my work. And he gave it to the casting director on the show. And the casting director, unbeknownst to me or to him, took it to the head of Showtime at the time and showed them and said, you know, what do you think about her for the lead? Like, would you? And so they came back to my dad and they had a conversation with my dad. My dad then came to me and had a conversation with me. And at first I was very stupidly when I look back on it, a little bit reluctant because I wanted to do, I thought, well, this is so nepotistic and this is weird. And I wanted to do stuff on my own. And that's also how I was raised. You know, he wasn't one to generally, I mean, I was shocked that he even came to me about the friend part. Um, but my mom was like, don't be an idiot. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and so, um, so I said, yes. And I'm sure that there was, uh, a lot of, um, interest in the idea of like a father and a daughter playing these roles together. It seems like it, looking back, back on it, it seems like a, Maybe there, it was more of like a marketing ploy or angle, you know. But um, that's how it happened. It just sort of. But it's a good now. movie. You do a good job in it, and, and yeah, um, thank you. I mean, you know, and, and especially, I'm 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 gonna have to assume that you you didn't grow anywhere near the hood, you know. So, oh, I did not grow up in the hood. No. So I mean, how do you prepare for a role like Nicole to make it um, authentic? Yeah, um, the way that I did it at the time, because this was obviously like pre-internet and all of that stuff. So um, I went to, I don't remember exactly which one it was, but I went down to a high school in one of the rougher areas of Los Angeles. Um, 
in the South Central area, and I hung up, hung out with some kids. They let me come into the classroom, and they let me hang, and I just sort of observed, and I talked to them, and, um, you know, m- my feeling about everything, I mean, a- an actor is an actor. You know, we play roles. We're not, we don't have to have had the experience per se. You know, we, our skill and our craft is to step into those shoes, and I think in general, all experiences are universal. It's all sort of relative, you know, but the experience of, um, you know, for for Nicole, the experience of longing for something more, the experience of feeling um, abandoned or feeling unsafe or uh, having trouble trusting, you know, all of these things that she had gone through are things that I knew well, that, as all humans know, you know, so it was really just a matter of kind of um, tapping into what her experience was, understanding it from my own perspective, and then also really learning about what it would be like and what it is like for young girls growing up in that kind of an environment. Do you know what the word visualize means? Sort of. Well, think of something important that's happened to you. Special event, say. Okay? Can you see it? Yeah. Sure, it's like a picture in my mind. The mind is used for many things. And one of the most important is to visualize and store information as images. That's how we learn. Okay. Now I'll take you back and we'll start at the beginning. What beginning? Before you were born. Before I was born. Before the Earth was formed. Before the solar system was created. Before the galaxies and the universe were born. That beginning. Do you know what it was called? No. The Big Bang. How long ago was that? 15, 18 billion years. Shit. That's a long time ago. Yes. We will visualize what science says happened from that moment on up to the moment you came into this life. One of the most powerful pieces of information you can own is a sense of history. History of the universe as a whole. The galaxies within it of the solar system within our Milky Way galaxy, of planet Earth in that solar system, of the nations on that planet, of the people in those nations, your people from Africa to America to this glorious state, to this troubled city, to the very place where you were born. That beginning. Wow. You don't need much breath to talk, huh? know whence you came, Nicole, for if you know whence you came, there's really no limit to where you can go. You're surrounded by some really talented people as well, so. Yeah. Your father, Felicia yeah. Rashad, Khalil Kane. Yeah. And then Leon, Leon Ichaso, who. Yeah. It's directed a lot of really, some, you know, some of my hidden gen movies are, are, are Leon's work. I mean, Zoom Man, I guess, with, I think Khalil was in that also. Um, mm-hmm. but, but some really good work. I mean, I know this it had to have been a tight schedule, but I mean, any lessons that you learned from that mm-hmm. movie? How do you carry it with you to this day? Do you flash back on it? or? Um, I think it was a really wonderful kind of um, introduction into this business for me. Um, like I had said, I had done independent movies, but, you know, I had done very low budget. You know, we're all crowded in a, you know, tiny little room, you know, eating a tray of donuts from Dunkin' Donuts and like working crazy hours. You know, I wasn't used to like these sort of legitimate productions that have like actual money that they're putting into it. So, you know, it was a luxury to be able to walk into this really interesting world of movie making where we had the where we did have the luxury of shooting, you know, three pages a day or four pages a day and taking our time to really get into the material. Um, it was a really welcoming environment and a really creative environment with Leon. So um, I think it was just, it was a, a, a galvanizing experience in that I, I sort of was very, um, just grateful to be there. And like, I was like, yeah, this, this is, 
I, I knew I wanted to do it, but now I was like, I, I felt like I could do it somehow. You know, I was, I was actually having the experience with other people who were working a lot and, um, I don't know. They just really made me feel part of a, part of a team and part of something special. So that, I think that's what I took from it. It was, it was confidence building and it was, um, it inspired me to keep going and do more. Yeah. Well, I mean, I look at the film, I mean, I think it's a gem because of what you say. I mean, I, I think there needs to be more nepotism, quite frankly, um, within the industry. I, I agree. I, I agree now, many years on, 20 years on into my career. I agree. I think, um, take the help where you, where you can get it. And, and I will, and I will help my child in as many, many ways as I can. And because I, I think it's a tough, it's a tough world. It's a tough business and it's a tough world. And that's, you know, you want to help, you want to help whoever you can along whenever you can, you know, especially if you see that there's talent there always. But anyway, what were you going to say? No, I, well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say, I mean, this is the only, from what I can tell, it's the only official credit that, that your father executive produced the film on too. Yeah. So, and then I guess he did two more features after that. So it really is a moment in time that's, that's special, but also the legacy when viewers see the film, you can't not connect uh, Free of Eden to, uh, to Sir With Love and all the, directly yeah. to Sir With Love. And, and it just seems like a continuum and, and the message yeah. is there in terms of just a full circle thing, you know, so that, that resonates deeply for me. Yeah, well, for my dad, education is number one. It always has been, and that was how I grew up. And he didn't have an education. You know, his education stopped when he was, I think, 11 and a half years old. So he's entirely self-taught, and the idea that he could give an education to his kids was the thing that made him the proudest. And so anything for him having to do with taking a child from a disadvantaged background as he was and being able to provide them with more knowledge that opens the world up to them um, for him is the greatest story that could be told. And it was his story in a way, you know, there were so many people along the way who helped him and who, who taught him and informed him and, and he wouldn't be here t today without those people. And so he loves to tell that kind of a story because I think he wants it to inspire mentorship in other people, mm -hmm. you know? I, I love it. Um, so last, last thing, I, you know, I'll let you go. We'll have to continue this. I hope, I hope we can continue this, but, um, so, I mean, I, I I know in, I missed the In the Heat of the Night 50th anniversary in L.A. Yeah. I had to get there, and it was sold out. And I decided it was to awesome. Oh, yeah. you, were, you were in the building, of course. I, uh, we were there, yes. So how, how is Mr. Portier doing today? Oh, he's fantastic. He's doing great. He had his 90th birthday this past February, okay. and he's doing great, right. you know? Yeah, he's uh, still writing, and he's, you know, living his life. He doesn't really have any – oh, he's 90. He's not going to be making movies. He doesn't want to anyway, and he hasn't for a long time. He's – his pursuits are more kind of intellectual at this point. He likes to write and he likes to speak, which is what he was doing for the last like 20 years. Mm, I love it. Yeah. And yeah. Do, you, do you have a, now, Free of Eden is one of my favorite Sydney Poitier performances. Do you have one that you hold close to you? Of my dad? Yeah. Of my dad's performances? Um, you know, I love so many of them. It's just ridiculous. I love them for different reasons and I end up having different favorites. Depend, depending on where I am in my life. Um, right now, only because I just rewatched it recently, maybe six months ago, I rewatched um, Brother John and yes. thought it was such an interesting and great movie. So if that's you kind didn't, of. If you like, didn't mention that, I was going to mention that. Oh, interesting. That's so funny. Um, yeah, that's kind of, that's sort of like in the forefront of my mind right now. So I'm, um, that's my favorite for the moment. Now look here, John, you're in trouble. You want me to ship you back to Ludlow, Texas? No. Well, then you better answer my questions. I have been for some time. All right. Now, you tell me why you've been traveling to all these places in this passport. To see the world. Who paid for it? I did. Where'd you get the money? I worked. And what about this uh, Cuba, Albania, China? You know, American citizen isn't supposed to go there. Nobody stopped me. Say, what's this book? It's, uh, it's in Arabic, right? Yes. What is it? It's the Bible. That is, quotations from the Koran. Can you read that?
Do you speak Russian? Yes. Chinese? Yes. What else? Swahili. French. Spanish. German. How'd you learn? I listened. People have been telling me for 10 years, watch Brother John, Brother John. And, it's a great movie. And I finally got It's hard to get right now, too. It's a little difficult to get. It is. Yeah, it is. But, uh, but uh, definitely, there, there, was, there were some things. There were some things in that movie that um, don't, don't get uttered very often in mainstream American film. And, um, yeah. So I, I thank you for taking the time to share with our audience. Absolutely. Right, they're back there somewhere. Well, you're back there. Did you see yourself? On the oh, tail. oh yeah! Look at that, huh? <laughs> oh, you're really young there. Well, you look the same. I'm so young. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so thank thank you, Sydney Poitier, for taking the time to share Thanks. your memories of uh, Free of Eden. And, and I noticed somebody has put it on YouTube now. I don't know how long it's going to stay up, but oh wow, um, the whole movie. The whole movie's up there right oh, now. Wow. So wow. more people and getting great comments. Um, oh good. So people, maybe it's another full circle moment here. So awesome. Very cool. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.